Guardian columnist Nicola Clark started the Twitter hashtag SheCan'tBeAutistic to spotlight how women with autism are often dismissed, misunderstood, and underdiagnosed, if diagnosed at all. And guess what? Hashtag she isn't alone. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports an autism spectrum disorder prevalence rate of 1 in 68 American children. But obtaining that diagnosis and the life-changing therapies and resources that can come with it is particularly challenging for adult women like Nicola Clark because the combination of gender and age can make them doubly invisible to the clinical community. As with ADHD, researchers are only now paying closer attention to how autism functions and presents in girls girls, since historically it's been described as a neurodevelopmental disorder that creates extreme male brains, or brains that are sort of masculine superlatives. In fact, many diagnostic tools have been developed based exclusively on how autism functions and presents in adolescent boys. And that means being a woman going to the doctor to find out if she might be autistic is somewhat like going to a proctologist for a pap smear. It's just not going to happen. To get a better sense of why that is, it's helpful to know that the three primary symptoms of autism spectrum disorder are social impairments, communication difficulties, and repetitive or restrictive behaviors. Based on older research, boys are about four to five times likelier on average to be diagnosed and therefore receive appropriate treatment than girls, at least for now. More recent studies are paying closer attention to both how girls' brain structures and socialization patterns differ from boys among both autistic and non-autistic populations. They suggest the gender gap may be narrower, especially among high-functioning kids. So when it comes to those three autism hallmarks, girls tend to be more social and verbally fluent than boys, and repetitive behaviors are often less outstanding. And whereas autistic boys might exhibit aggression and hyperactivity, autistic girls are more adept at masking outward manifestations of the disorder. Fast forward these patterns to adulthood, and women like Nicola Clark, who have friends, families, kids, and stereotypically feminine interests, may be deterred from receiving autistic assessments. As one woman tweeted, hashtag she can't be autistic because she's an extrovert. Cynthia Kim, a writer at Autism Women's Network, says autistic women are instead likelier to be diagnosed solely for eating disorders and anxiety, which commonly co-occur with autism in women, as well as obsessive compulsive disorder, bipolar disorder, and borderline personality disorder. But I can't tell you precisely how often this happens because it simply hasn't been thoroughly researched. What I do know for a fact is that a lot remains to be explored and clarified in how autism functions and presents in girls and women across their lifespans, including its effect on relationships and employment, as well as optimal treatments and resources for aging women with autism, a cohort that's virtually undetectable in existing studies. Also, correct diagnoses can make a world of difference. Just take it from Nicola Clark, who wrote in The Guardian, quote, when the diagnosis came, I cried with relief. I'd felt it was almost a battle that I'd had to prove to myself that I wasn't mad. So how about you? Does that hashtag she can't be autistic ring a bell? If so, let us know. And in the meantime, be sure to come back and see us at now.howstuffworks.com so you can stay in touch with everything happening now online and also off.